Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we will be looking at today, okay? Follow me along, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Follow me along, make sure I'm telling you the truth, make sure I'm not lying to you, make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. If you have a question about the context, pause the video and search the context on your own time, okay? Be a Berean, follow me along, okay? Also follow me along because sometimes this, my mouth, goes quicker than my brain. And sometimes I skip a groove, so keep an eye out for that, okay? Sometimes I do that. I get talking a little too quickly, faster than my brain goes, okay? So follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, okay? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 55. You know, brethren, I know for certain that there are many of you within the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, not all of you, but a majority of us, are dealing with contention within what is called familia, family. And the, di the times are such where lines are drawn and some of us have to make a choice upon what we are going to stand with whom we are going to stand who is your mother who is your father now a while ago the lord gave me a video to do called who is my brother in response of a Jesuit coadjutor infiltrator who was uh, discovered quite atrociously um, who was made quite atrociously I should I should um, clarify uh, that will be in the description box for you we're going to be touching along the same lines of that today but um, you know brethren the redemption of the purchased possession draweth nigh and who is your mother? Who is your father? Psalm 55. Go there. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Yeah, right, brother, sister? Oh, Jesus, how long, how long? Yeah. Because of the voice of the enemy. Can you hear the enemy? Can you hear the devil? Can you hear the devils? Look here on YouTube. Oh! Look here on YouTube. Go outside your door. Run into a Christian with the sappy, uh, a splendor, sweet, love him into the kingdom nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. See, Satan wants everyone to come together. And how do you do that? How do you get people to come together? By compromise. You get people to come together by compromise of what? Truth. Okay? Uh, uh, one, one moment. Excuse me, I had to clean off the lens on this. Okay? But how do you get people together? Well, you read in Genesis chapter 11, where they were building the tower uh, to reach unto heaven. I believe that is Genesis 11, right? Uh, let me just double check. We're not going to read that because we actually have quite a few scriptures we're going to go through today. Yes, the, uh, the Tower of Babel, or Babel, however you want to pronounce it. Okay? How do you get people together? 
Now, when you get people together, what happens? They want to make towers to make a name for themselves. And today, how do you get people together? Through compromise of what? The truth. The truth. How are we, who are of the church of the living God, supposed to have fellowship with those who are not of us? We're going to look at that, of course. It, it, it can't happen. And if it does happen, something is being compromised. We've got to watch out for that. Especially in the times coming, which are rapidly coming. Verse 4, my heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fear and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness Shalom. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. <laughs> yes, yes, the boisterous winds that come from the enemy, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Look at this. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Haven't you? Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. Verse 12. See, what Satan has done, especially here in America, long ago, destroy what is that thing known as family which consists of husband, wife, and children. Okay? The husband is the head of the wife. All right? All right? And what has happened through many devices, Satan has come along and just wrecked what is known as the family here in America and in other nations as well. Okay? The way to do that is this. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. Yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of enemies. I got a lot of enemies. And it's quite easy to get away from them. You know? I, I mean, it is. They want to, you know, they overload and all their channels and all the things that they do on other social media things and they they send emails trying to uh, create division among brethren okay one second sorry about that I had to sneeze yes uh, the enemies it's, it's it's easier to hide from them because you know you just ignore them and that really ticks them off Okay, but they have many devices. They have many YouTube accounts, many channels on different social media platforms, or they they uh, find out who you have um, uh, converse with via email, and then they go to seek to separate and to cause division, like that one guy in Canada did. Um, you know that that's what they do. But see, for us, it's it's easier to hide ourselves from our enemies. beg your pardon, <laughs> than it is for verse 13. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide, and, my, and mine acquaintance. Verse 14. We took sweet counsel together and walked onto the house of God in company. Ah. When people who you thought were of us turn out to be psychotic people or Jesuit coadjutor infiltrators, that hurts. But when you get a relationship with these people and then all of a sudden 
Uh, like there were some t uh, a couple from what was it New Hampshire uh, who worked for the Vatican absolutely who moved too quickly you know if you wanted it to be a little bit more believable you should have waited a little longer but they moved too quickly okay when you establish a relationship with someone and then suddenly they turn on you because of whatever you always because of flesh that hurts when you've had converse with someone for years and then all of a sudden over some stupid heretical nonsense like the actually seeing God or that people today get to go to heaven or hell and come back and write a book or make a movie about it. So when those people go away, that's what hurts. That's what hurts. That's what hurts. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, we want verses 1 on to verse 7. Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. The good man is perished out of the earth. There is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. And that begs the question, well, who is my brother? You're my brother because you say you are, right? Right? And then you go to Matthew about uh, where he talks about, you know, if your brother trespass against thee, right? Well, who is my brother? You're my brother because you say you are my brother? Uh-uh. No. You're my brother if we have the same father. We would have the same father if you went to our father according to his condition and not your own. Okay? Yes, the Lord has conditions for salvation. See, in Christianity lies to you and tells you that there is no condition. That is a lie. See, Christianity tells you that you just believe. Okay? Or you got to do something. And believing, you know, just believing. There are conditions. You got to be broken. You have to have contrition. And you have to have the fear of the Lord. Those things are required. Okay? There are requirements for your salvation. Beware of people who say that there aren't. Beware of people who say that there aren't. Okay? But who is your brother? He's your brother because he says he is? And what is this net? What is the net? Hmm? A net. Remember how big nets usually are. And they cover a broad sp spectrum. And it's indiscriminate of who it drags in that net, isn't it? just like Christianity. Hmm? A Christianity that wants to bring everybody together under the headship of Rome too, by the way. Verse 3. That they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire. So they wrap it up. The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now shall there be perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend. I've had many people who I thought were friends go away. And in retrospect, praise the Lord. Because the people who I thought were my friends who went away, uh, because of flesh, also because of doctrine. But those who went away, praise the Lord. Because those who are amongst now are true friends. Are true friends. 
Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guy. Comparing scripture with scripture, go back to Psalm 55, verse 13 and 14. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guy, and mine acquaintance. Notice it says acquaintance and not friend. Notice that. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God and company. Back in Micah, chapter 7, verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guy. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Thy wife? Hmm? For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter riseth up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies. Are they a man's enemies? are the men of his own house. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. When father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Our Lord references this in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 31 on to verse 36. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Now you got to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth, being dispensational. What So far what we have looked at is specifically for our instruction in righteousness. A lot of what we are going to be looking at will come to fruition during the time of Jacob's trouble, but yet we are experiencing aspects of this today. Okay, we have to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, because today, if we are outside and the Lord opens up a moment for us to use us as his witness and we make the choice not to, that's not going to cost us our salvation. It'll cost us blessings, mercies, uh, provision, fellowship, all kinds of stuff. But it will not cost us our salvation. I'm like this. Okay? you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? you got to remember, before our Lord died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, he was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? You have to remember that. We are looking at this for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? But the instruction in righteousness is, okay? The Lord opens up a door for us that he wants to use us for his glory and witnessing or whatever. And we make the choice to not go through that door. Whatever it is. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ, he is the door. Watch out for idiots who openly, brazenly tell you what they are about booting the door, okay? <laughs> People's ignorance is your, is your strong point there, pal. But anyway, okay? For our instruction in righteousness today, it's not going to cost us our salvation. No. Or else God is a liar. But it will cost us many other things. Okay? But whosoever shall deny me before men... Him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Okay? And, holy place here, this is not part of the notes, 
but you can go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 13. It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead to that. If we suffer, we also shall reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Not salvation. Mercies, blessings, kindness, provision, fellowship, that kind of stuff. Not salvation. Your salvation is not your salvation. Okay? Salvation is the one thing you don't have to worry about as the church of the living God. Because it's not yours. Okay? It is the gift of God by His grace through our faith. That's what, that's the one thing you don't have to worry about. Why do you think Catholicism teaches the sin of presumption? Hmm? Which is in the Catechism. They brazenly teach that. You know, you go to a Catholic. Do you know for certain that you're saved and going to heaven when you die? They, they can't rightly answer that. I hope so. Uh, scriptures say that you can know so. Well, the King James Bible is on the list of forbidden books. Catholicism tells you not to read the authorized version. That will lead you into heresy. And isn't it interesting that all these Jesuit trained cemeterians like that disgusting Mike Winger, um, that, 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 that one guy, the, the Search or whatnot, MacArthur, Justin Peters, all these other Jesuit trained cemeterians. Isn't it interesting that they all attack the authorized version of the scriptures? But see, salvation is something that we do not have to worry about because our salvation is the Lord himself. And if we come to him on his terms, he seals us. Once saved, always saved until the, uh, day of, uh, until the redemption of the purchased possession. Excuse me. Okay? Once saved, always saved. But see, if we deny him in witness and testimony or whatever, it will cost us a lot of other things. Not his salvation, though. If we believe not, verse 13, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Now go back to Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. And what are we reading to? Verse 36. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. <laughs> Have you ever had a uh, problems with family because of the authorized version of the scriptures. They want to read the nitwit living in the trash NLT or the NIV, right? Well, I like my NIV. That's not the word of God. <laughs> Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. See, the enemies that I have can hide myself from them rather easily. Oh, they do what they do, but that's, that's, I expect that from them. That's, they, they're going to do what they do. Whether they, they try to infiltrate and turn people against you, or whether they make a myriad of videos against you or not, uh, or mention you, and, or uh, be in another nation and try to me mess stuff up for you in another nation where you are, whatever. See, you can hide yourself from them. But when it comes close to home, Your mother, your father, your brother or sister, your wife, your husband, you mothers out there, what about your son or your daughter, your fathers out there, vice versa. Who is your mother? Mother Church! That's what, shut up.
Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. They're like, Brad, why didn't you read the rest of that? We're going to read Luke 14. Luke 14, verses 26 and 27. Let's read 25 on the 27th. Excuse me. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Now, our Lord is not promoting you to hate your mother or father as you would think. Okay? No. It's not that you go up to your father or mother and say, I hate you. No. This is talking about, in the beginning, God. Christ first. God is a jealous God. The lost have a lot of problem with that. God is a jealous God. He made you to have fellowship with him. Okay? And he gets irate when you, his creation, take what you are supposed to give to him as father and you give it on to the devil. You know, your best friend, the devil, who is teaching you Christianity right now. Yeah. Yeah. No. What he is saying is he has to be first. Jesus Christ has to come before your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brothers or sisters, and even your own life. See, and this, and this is the thing when you think about the Jesuits, okay? Because one of the arguments that I've encountered, uh, I wholeheartedly believe, that the Jesuit order sank the Titanic. Purposely. And the arguments come up about, well, Brad, they did not know that there was going to be, no, they didn't know there was going to be an iceberg. No, they didn't. That was just, ooh, there's an iceberg. Okay, this is easier. This is going to be easier. Because remember when the Titanic left the ports or whatever, there was a fire within the boiler already that buckled some of the steel and uh, did something to the paint. Uh, you can look that up. Uh, one way or another, the Jesuit order was going to sink that ship. The fact that there was an iceberg there just made it a little bit more easier. That ship was going down. Why am I bringing that up? Jesuit coadjutors, Jesuits, purposely went down like Captain Smith, a Jesuit temporal coadjutor. Okay? Jesuits purposely went down on that ship. Okay? For the greater glory of God. Ad majorum de gloria. Okay? And they did that for their father, the devil. Okay? The Jesuits that were on, on board the Titanic. Like the captain and several other Jesuits. Okay? Who would have, if there was no iceberg, that ship was going down. One way or another. Like the guy who, when uh, the Titanic was picking people up before it head out, uh, there was a Jesuit who went on and took those now famous uh, photographs of everybody. That was a Jesuit who did that. And then his superior said to him, quote, get off that ship. That ship is going down. Okay? But see, these Satanists are willing to go down with the Titanic. You and I. Yea, and his own life also. That's the way we ought to be. You know, I've made this I've made this comparison before. Our enemies are rapid and very, very active, always moving, always doing something. You know, they they can't rest unless they cause someone to fall. Okay? Alright, they're always doing something either on YouTube or on other uh, social media platforms, right? And what are we doing? Okay? Our enemies and what they are doing 
in the manner in which they are doing it, meaning their dedication to serving Satan. What are we doing? But see, there again, he's not talking about you hate them. No. You don't put them, your family, for the Lord. If the Lord has saved you, if you have come to the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms, and how many of you are going through the... I know of a dear young brother who says to, has said to me and tearfully that there are days when he wishes he was never born because it's so bad for him within his family. My best friend, his mother is going to hell. His sister is a lost false convert. Another brother, another brother, his wife hates him, wants nothing to do with him. And so on and so forth. Another brother amongst family. And you know, the one brother, uh, his family is Catholic. Another brother, his family is Catholic. Living amongst the enemy. But see, that's what he's talking about. The Lord is talking about putting him above your family. He comes first. Is the Lord first in our lives? You say yes. But is he? Or are you going to compromise in order to keep peace? Because when Paul talks about as much as lieth in you, live peaceably, he's not talking about compromising truth. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And if it comes up between my Lord Jesus Christ and my family, Jesus comes first. What about you? What about you? Hmm? Now go back. Oh, and while we're here, let's go. Oh, one more. Go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Now, John chapter 16, verses 1 and verse 12. We, like I told you, you got to remember rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? John 16, verses 1 and verse 12. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. Now, today, today, this can happen, this does happen in a way today, like, for example, in some of the uh, uh, Muslim countries, if you're in a family of Muslims and you are of the Church of the Living God, that could cost you your life. Absolutely. Um, here in the States or other places in Europe, uh, your family is Catholic and you are of the Church of the Living God. Okay? All right? But see, the fulfillment of this will come during the time of Jacob's trouble. We are experiencing a type of it today. But the actual fulfillment of this will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because remember, in the book 1984, if you've never read the book 1984 by uh, Orson Welles, I suggest you do. Okay, That book was dictated to him by devils. Just like a lot of the rock music and the Christian contemporary music or contemporary Christian music is dictated to them by devils. Okay? Uh, that was dictated to uh, Orson Welles, or whatever his name is, 1984, by devils. He did not come up with that by himself. Okay, And in the book 1984, you read about how the children are narking, snitching on their mother and father. Okay, That's going to be coming during the time of Jacob's trouble, especially with the implementation of the mark of the beast in the right hand or in the forehead. Especially also when the church of the living God, the body of Christ, is not going to be on the earth. Okay? In a dispensation that is faith and works. Okay? But we experience a type of this today. 
there are those of you who are Hebraic people, the Jews, who believe on your Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, and your relatives are Hasidim, you're going to be cast out like dumb. And like I said, in Muslim countries, okay, they're all following following that pedophile, uh, what's his name, uh, Mohammed, and you're of the Church of the Living God, that could cost you your life, absolutely. 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 The fulfillment of this, the true fulfillment of this will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. But, for us today, we have a type of this going on. Because when you are saved of the Church of the Living God, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Unless you compromise. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time that when the time shall come ye may remember that I told you of them. These things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you as king. And now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you Sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Spirit of truth. Lord, is that spirit? Trinitarians. You guys are crazy. <coughs> And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of, the world, of this world is judged. I have many things to say unto you. Ye cannot bear them now. Let's read verse 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of the truth, has come. Uh, sorry about that. I forgot to turn my ringer off. <laughs> Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will shew you things to come. Spirit of truth, and the Lord is that spirit. See, when the Lord saves us, He seals us with Himself. The Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Okay? And the Lord within us is perfect. The Lord within us will not guide us into sin. The Lord within us cannot sin. And because we have the Lord within us, that rubs contrary with the natural man. Okay? So hence, we're going to have conflict with those, especially, like I said, our enemies, we can just put distance. But when it comes to our family, it's supposed to be the Lord first, brethren, sisters. Lord first. Is the Lord first? Is the Lord first? Let's continue in Psalm 55. Go back there now. Picking up in verse 15. Let death seize upon them. Let them go down quick, that means alive, into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Yes, when your mother and father forsake you, the Lord will take you. Hmm? Right? And like, we, and like we have already read in Micah, in Micah, Micah chapter 7, Micah, <laughs> in Micah chapter 7, in Micah chapter 7, verse 7, Therefore will I look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation, my God will hear me. 
Verse uh, 16 again in Psalm 55. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Because they have no changes. Now some might, I'll go to Psalm, uh, Proverbs, excuse me, 24. Some will bring up this argument about that, about the changes. Okay? About the changes. Proverbs 24, verses 21 on to verse 22. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given the change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? So now, okay, now wait. Now wait a minute. Right here, this is saying, uh, meddle not with them that are given the change. But here in Psalm 55, verse 19, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Shelah, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's the, there must be a contradiction, right? No. See, the easy believers in devil, heretic, scoundrel, Jesuit scum tells you that there doesn't really have to be a change or a new creature, okay? Changed life does not appear in Scripture, okay? New creature does. New creature does. And because you are a new creature, and what makes you a new creature? Christ within you, the hope of glory, okay? Uh, Christ in you makes you a new creature. And because Christ is in you, something going to change around here. Yeah. But see, the easy believism heretic that skips over scriptural repentance, contrition, manning up and taking responsibility and accountability and fear of the Lord, okay? They just say, just believe, okay? There should be changes, but hey, if there, if there aren't, don't worry. You saved yourself by your belief, okay? Very wicked, very wicked, okay? But see, there are those who say that there, there doesn't have to be. A, you can be the same old person you were, but just added a little bit more to it because you just believed and saved yourself. Or you just changed the outside. On the inside, you're still the same old rotten, unsaved sinner. But, but, but what is this talking about? Okay? What is Proverbs 24, 21 on to verse 22 talking about in contrast to Psalm 55, verse 19? What is this talking about? I'll tell you. Well, I won't tell you the scriptures. Well, go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is what this is talking about. Don't be fooled by this. There are those that are coming around nowadays saying that, hey, you don't need to be any, you don't need anything to change. Just believe. But even like atheists, it's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't Jesus supposed to like give me some kind of a new life, right? I don't want that old one and you're telling me that I, nothing has to change except that I believe now? That doesn't make rational sense. Atheists can even figure that one out. But, but what is this talking about? First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Seared, like, you know, you take a nice ribeye and you put it on the grill and it gets seared, uh, uh, that beautiful brown color with the black lines and then you flip it, sears it, okay? You cannot kill your conscience. You can't. 
You can sear it, but you can't kill your conscience. Even the most sociopathic, psychopath, murderer, Jesuit coadjutor does not have a dead conscience. They have a seared conscience. They have a seared conscience. Okay? Now also, Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 16. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Circumcision. Those who say, you got to do the commandments. You got to keep the law today to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God. Okay? Circumcision. He was making reference onto the Jewish people. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. But ultimately, what is the circumcision equated with? Keeping of the law. Okay? So let's continue. You don't have to keep the law today to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. That is heresy. Those are words to no profit when you got someone coming along saying, you got to keep the Ten Commandments. You couldn't do that if you tried. Read Acts chapter 15. I'll clear that up for you real quick. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 11. Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake, for money. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Cretans. Kindred. A, ty a type of kindred. So Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. I, I guess Paul was a little racist, wasn't he, by saying the Cretans are always liars, huh? Signaling out a specific kindred and a trait of a specific kindred. I'll let you roll that around in your head a little bit. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Because when you sear it like a steak, it is defiled, isn't it? You got that raw steak, you know, that red uh, raw steak that you put on the grill yeah it changes color it seals it and makes it real tasty but it is defiled from what it originally was wasn't it they profess that they know God but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate The fool says in his heart there is no God. They wouldn't with their lips say that there is an, uh, no God. But they demonstrate it here. Like with these atheists. I don't believe in a God. This gets them every time. This gets them every time. Yeah, you do. Like the correspondence I had a little while ago. Uh, recently. Uh, it's like, uh, that's real disrespectful for you to tell me what I believe. Uh, dude, you do believe in a God. The one that you look at in the mirror. Because you are your own judge. You are your own God. You decide what is good and evil. Uh, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That really, you atheists out there, you don't like to hear that, do you? I know you don't. I know you don't. Because that's the truth. There is no such thing as an atheist. There really isn't. Because they are their own gods. They are their own gods. I, I don't believe I'm God. Uh, no, but you are the one who tells you what is right and wrong. You are judging for yourself. You cannot judge accurately. Only God can judge what is truly right and truly wrong. And you get that through the scriptures. You judge yourself through first through the scriptures. 
and hence you doing that, you judge others because you have a perfect standard. The standard for the atheist is themselves. Hence, they are their own God. Okay? But now go to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. And of course, James chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, the fear of the Lord, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But, get, get, get your little pen, circle that but, but, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. You know the boisterous wind? <sighs> hmm? For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, meddle not with them who are given the chain. But here, go back to Psalm 55. But here, in Psalm 55, verse 19, it says, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Shilah, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Hmm. See, what Proverbs chapter 24 is talking about are those who flip-flop, who are unstable. Okay? It's one thing to change because a brother or sister rebuke you through the scriptures, the Lord using them to rebuke you through the scriptures. It's That's a totally different thing. When you are wrong and the Lord rebukes you through the scriptures, then you make a video humbling yourself. Hey, I was wrong. I repent. And that's different. But then when you got someone, it's like, well, today I believe in the redemption of the purchased possession. Tomorrow. Oh, no. No, we're going through the great tribulation. Oh, we're once saved, always saved. Oh, wait, no, no, we're not. Oh, yes, we are. I've changed my mind. Wishy-washy, up and down. That's, that's the warning in Proverbs 24, 21 on to 22. Mill not with them who are given change. It's not talking about those who have had an encounter with the living God and had, were broken and manned up and took responsibility for putting him on the cross and having the house scared out of you and calling upon the name of the Lord. That's not what that's talking about. No. It's talking about the wave thing. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? We are to be new creatures. Okay? And being a new creature, changes are going to come. Okay? Let's continue here in uh, Psalm 55. He hath put forth his hand, verse 20, against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Dragon speak. You know, these humble-sounding people who who never bring their voice above the sound of a whisper, who know how to compose themselves while the camera is rolling. Yes, that speak like dragons. The words are what? Smoother than butter. War was in his heart. It was softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Kind of like in Proverbs 7. With the kisses of her lips, she forced him. Because it speaks like a dragon. Softly, smoothly. Like I've, like I've told you, I have very little trust for someone who doesn't have a little fire lit under their Botox every once in a while. I, I don't really trust someone like that. I really don't. Now let's continue. 
Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He, sh he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. And I will trust in thee. I will trust in thee. Amen. 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 And see, through this thing of family, our family, more often than not, our family will come to us with these smoother than butter with their mouth and uh, softer than oil. We're family. Uh, how many of you of the Church of the Living God, when it came to family matters, you'll have one of your family say, okay, no matter what you do, don't talk about any religious stuff. We can't talk, you can't talk about this, you can't... Really? So you're going to tell me what I can't speak about along, among my family? How many of you have encountered that? How many of you have encountered that? We've already looked at what the Lord had to say about that. Hmm? Is the Lord first in your life? What are you compromising with? Who are you compromising for? Because brethren, as you have already figured out, is the compromise on their behalf? No. Their compromise is putting up with you as the church of the living God in their circles. But they expect you to be silent. That's why I don't have much to do with my family. Because they want me to be silent. You know, when you're around your brother, don't say anything. It's like, hey, if the Lord has me, wants me to say something, I'm going to say it. Okay? Not going to be a jerk about it. Okay? But if the Lord puts something there, it's like, Brad, speak up now. I'm going to do it. I don't care in whose presence I am. Okay? If the Lord wants something to be said, it's going to be said. End of story. But more often than not, more often than not, what happens? We're family. And when you're, hey, when you're around your family, when you're around, you know, your brother or your sister, your father or mother, whatever, don't talk about this. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Verses 46 on to verse 50. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Hmm. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, I was once at uh, uh, this one wicked uh, Tony Robbins disciple who I used to work for, very evil, wicked man, said to me, oh, you, you know the will of God? Yeah, I do, actually. And see, Christians, it's like, you know the will of God? Uh, uh, uh hello, McFly, is this on? Uh, yeah. We're supposed to know the will of God. Yeah. Yeah. I do know what the will of God is. I do. I do. Well, you know what's going to happen today. No, I don't. What, is this? what, what am I talking about? 
first of all, we have to, again, rightly divide in the word of truth, there is a dispensational difference here. Okay? Because when our Lord said this, this was before what? The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? He was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. John chapter 6. We want verses 29 all the way to verse 40. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that, you, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God is manifest in the flesh. Yes, he was. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is. He's not walking amongst us right now. He will be at his second coming. We, his body, are his is his representative. Okay? That's how that works. Okay? But see, this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. He came as king, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews as the son of David. They needed to believe on him as their king, as the son of David. And if they had done that, he would have brought in the kingdom of heaven. Of course, it was prophesied that that was not going to happen. But see, he did it anyway. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't be just, fair, right, and equal, would he? Many people ask, well, if he knew that they were going to reject it, why did he still do it? Well, number one, his ways are not our ways. And number two, if he didn't, then those people, it's like, you never gave us a, a chance. He's fair, right, and equal. But see, he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. The actual, physical, literal kingdom of heaven. They had to believe on him as king. Some did. But Jewry, in its entirety, did not. Or else none of this would have been happening today. Let's continue. They said therefore unto him, What sign shewest thou then, that we may see him believe thee? What do, dost thou work? And he, you know, we're going to look at uh, John chapter 10 here in a little bit. But it's like, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, our Lord rose people from the dead, cast out devils, cured sicknesses, uh, miraculously fed thousands of people with a few fishies and two loaves of bread and they're asking <laughs> what sign shewest thou then? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written he gave them bread from heaven to eat then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me. Now pay attention. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. We, unlike crazy charismatics, 
okay, who do not, we do not visually see God today, okay? They, while our Lord was on the earth, Jesus Christ is God the Father, okay? Like it says in John, what is that, John, uh, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 9, uh, verse 8 and 9, Oh, uh, no, okay. Verses 7 on to verse 9. John 14, verses 7 on to verse 9. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Look. Okay. So, go back to John 6. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Okay. Dispensational difference. Okay. He was walking on the earth as king. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. The son of David. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The actual, physical, literal kingdom at Jerusalem. That way is east. Okay? Alright? So, when he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people, it was his will that they believe on him as king that he would bring in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? That's what this is talking about. Okay? That is what this is talking about. All right? Different dispensation. Because remember, the law was still binding when the Lord was on the earth. Okay? The perfect sacrifice for sins was yet made. Okay? All right? We, today, we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? You crazy, charismatic devil. You think you've seen the Lord today. You have not. You have seen a devil. Or the devil, as far as we know. Okay? So, right here, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Okay? Now, everlasting life, of course, is given to us today. Yes, of course. Of course. But see, that, that everyone would see it the Son. Where is Jesus today? He is representative in his body. But we are not little Christs. Okay? See, this is talking about him being physically on the earth. All right? All right? There's a dispensational difference here. All right? So when he said in Matthew chapter 12, all right, instruction in righteousness, absolutely. But you got to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, John, uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 49 and 50, and he stretched forth his hand toward his disciple, disciples. And said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. And what was that will that he was talking about? We just saw it in John chapter 6, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Okay? Everlasting life. If he would have brought in the kingdom of heaven, there we go. But he didn't. Because they were going to reject it. Okay? Dispensational difference. Now go to John chapter 10. Okay? John chapter 10. Alright? John chapter 10. See, the will before the death, burial, and resurrection was different than his will for us today. Okay? Because when Jesus Christ was first walking the earth, he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. And ultimately to die to pay the penalty for sin. Okay? 
All right? That's what he came to do. So the will of God differed then as it does now. Oh. Oh. Really? Yes. 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 Because he was first there offering the kingdom of heaven onto the Jews. Okay? All right? Today we're not building the kingdom of heaven. We're not kingdom builders. Roman Catholics are kingdom builders. Building that kingdom for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? Go to John chapter 10, verses 1 on verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Again, for our instruction in righteousness, this applies. But specifically, what he was saying is, okay, what he was saying here in this was, there were those there who accepted him as king. For example, perfect example, the rich young ruler and the blind man. The rich young ruler went up to him, good master. What, what thing must I do to inherit eternal life? And what does the Lord say to him? Why callest thou me good? There is none good but not, there is none good but who? God. Okay? The blind guy, when the Lord walked by, couldn't see nothing, right? He's blind. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Lord stopped. It's like, whoa. A Jew addressed him as son of David. You see? His sheep hear his voice. The rich young ruler heard the voice of Jesus but wasn't of his sheep. Okay? Wasn't of his sheep because he didn't see God there. The blind man knew. The blind man who could not see with his eyes yet saw and knew that Jesus was the son of David. Okay? Instruction in righteousness, this? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And how do we discern today? God is a spirit. You remove that letter A, that opens the way for a light. Well, God is spirit. Then how are you supposed to know which one is which? You got to go to a Jesuit trained cemeterian, okay, who attacked the authorized version of the scriptures. In the authorized version of the scriptures, it says in John chapter 4, God is a spirit. Most of the Bibles, if not all of them, God is spirit. How are you supposed to distinguish between which one? Okay? Now, in John chapter 10, verses 22 on to verse 30. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. <laughs> hey, hey. Jesus answered them I told you ye believe not the works that I do in my father's name they bear witness of me you know like raising the dead casting out devils curing sicknesses okay feeding thousands of people with nothing okay but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Instruction in righteousness. There will be a video in the description box where we discuss what is instruction in righteousness. Okay? But instruction in righteousness for us today? Absolutely. Doctrinally, no. No. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He is offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Okay? All right? You got to remember that. Instruction in righteousness? Absolutely. Doctrinally. 
He's offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people here, which is not happening today. Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Well, let's continue. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Check this out. Pluck them out of his hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one, in essence. Oh, oh in spirit. I and my Father are one. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You and I, even you ugly devils, we're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. One God. Not one God that three persons. Atheists, Muslims at least, got that right. One plus one plus one does equal three. Stupid. Okay? But, now some people like to go to this to point about, to, to talk about eternal security. All right? And we have eternal security today. Absolutely we do. Absolutely we do. This is not the best verses for us today to prove eternal security. You can go to Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? Uh, sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? Um, Ephesians chapter uh, 4 is it? What is it? Um, and grieve not the Holy Ghost. Uh, and grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption, okay? There are many other scriptures within the Pauline epistles applicable for us today doctrinally which are better suited to prove eternal security, okay? There are. Because this, when you're in the hand of the king, no one's going to take you out of his hand. But see, you also got to remember this. Today, we are of his body. Okay? So, we're not any longer in his hand when we are already part of his body. Okay? We are the body of Christ. Alright? Alright? It's like that. It's like where one or two or, two or three to are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Uh, today, if you are saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, God lives within you. Okay? God lives within you. Alright? There are better verses that you can use as the Church of the Living God to prove eternal security once saved, always saved. Okay? Yes! Yeah, I mean, you can look up and, um, I mean, you can read this, yes. Yeah, yeah, but there are better verses. For us today. Okay? There are better verses for us today. Okay? But you got to remember, when he said this in John chapter 10, he had to, yet to do what? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Moreover, brethren... I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. You read a New American Standard, an NIV, an ESV. Does that say being saved? <laughs> by which ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for our sins. Okay? The blood atonement. Okay? What happened? The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. The payment for our sins. That's what happened. 
And since that has happened, salvation changed from the Old Testament under the law, which was faith and works with no eternal security, to this dispensation, which is by grace through faith, eternal security, when the Lord, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, when you come to him on his terms, and he saves you, seals you until the day of redemption. Erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? All right? And when the Lord, when you come to the Lord, broken of your self-righteousness, manning up, taking accountability and responsibility, it's your fault that he went to the cross. It's my fault that he went to the cross. And the fear of the Lord is there. Because if you don't fear him, <laughs> who do you fear? Men? you got to fear the Lord. Because the Lord's the one who's going to send you to hell. Oh. Yeah. You know, salvation is easy. It really is. The hard part is you getting over you. That's the hard part. Getting over that I'm a good person. I ain't as bad and so as so and so. I I I don't have to change, just believe. That's the hard part. That you are God, knowing good and evil. That ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That you know how to judge what is good and what is evil. That's what's hard. Otherwise, it is simple. Come to him broken and contrite. And in fear of him, call upon his name that he may save you. That's simple enough, isn't it? See, the hard part is you getting over you. It's not you don't give up your sins and then get saved. You couldn't do that at gunpoint. you got to die. Death. Death is a requirement. Death to yourself. Okay? Death to yourself. Okay? Today, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, one verse, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You're a new creature. How are you a new creature? When you come to the Lord on His terms, and He saves you, He seals you with Himself. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, and the Lord is that Spirit. He seals you with Himself. Him, the Lord Himself, makes you a new creature. That's what it is. Okay? Okay? And being a new creature. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 17 on to verse 24. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Blindness of their heart. The fool says in his heart there is no God. They they won't they won't say with their lips. But in works they deny him. Who being past feeling. Have given themselves over. Unto lasciviousness. To walk all. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have, no, ye have not so learned Christ. If so be. That ye have heard him. And have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus. Uh, the spirit of truth. He shall guide you into all truth. Okay? The Lord lives within me. The Lord speaking to you through this vessel, through the scriptures, that's prophesying today. Okay? Alright? That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. See, 
Jesus Christ living within us makes us a new creature. But see, he's not forcing you to walk according to the scriptures. You have to make the right choice. You have to decide. Okay? You have, okay. When you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, you're going to heaven. Once saved, always saved, eternally secure. But he's not going to force you to make the right decisions. Or else you're a robot. He wants you to make the right decisions. Okay? He wants you. That's why Paul is saying that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. You as the church of the living God, you can do what every single wicked Christian out there can do. Justify worldliness. You can do what any wicked lost sinner can do. Things are lawful for you. Okay? Not all things are expedient. Okay? You have to make the right choices. It's not at gunpoint by the Lord or by the devil. You got to make the right choices. God doesn't want a robot. If he did, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The hidden man of the heart, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, making the right decisions. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and verse 11. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. Okay, who is this talking to? Those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Is this talking to you, false converts, or those of you who deny Christ? No! This is for saved people. Now walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Christ died for all people. Yes, he did. But not everybody is going to go to the Lord on his terms. We have a, basically a whole nation, millions of people, who boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Okay? Straight is the way. Narrow is the way. Broad is the way that leadeth on to destruction. But narrow is the way that leadeth on to life. Okay? Look at look at up look 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 on YouTube on whatever platform. Look at all this Christianity. Broad is the way. Okay, broad is the way. All right. Yes, Christ died for all. Beg your pardon. Christ died for all people. Yes, He did. His His love is there. But see, you gotta go to Calvary. You have to die to you. There has to be a death. There has to be a death. Death of your self-righteousness. That's the hard part. Okay? Yes, this salvation is available to all people. Yes, it is. But there's a condition to it. you got to die to yourself. And that's when someone who doesn't want that will boot the door out of the way, put on a garb of religiosity, and away they go. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Saints. You're saved, born again, converted, you're a saint. And see, right away, when you hear saint, you, you're polluted because of what Catholicism has done. Someone who is saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, guess what? You're a saint. Now, you might not behave as what you conceive as a saint. But you are a saint nonetheless. And see, thanks to Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, you get that mixed up. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, speaking as though you say in their, your heart there is no God, 
nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, and, uh, you did, 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 well, you got the, uh, Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Hold your place there. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Oh, where is that? Verse, uh, uh, verse 3. Uh, For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhor, abhorreth. The Lord abhorreth the covetous. Uh, yeah, uh, verse 5 in Ephesians 5. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater. What is their idol? A little marionette statue. No, like the atheists. They are their own idol. I don't believe I'm God. Yes, you do. That's disrespectful for you to and shut up. You are your own God. You are your own standard. You are your own. You judge yourself what is good and evil. You can't do that. Only God can do that. Rightly. Okay? Wouldn't that, you meet a, an atheist, a professing atheist, you bring that up to them? Get some every time. Get some every time. Every time. So far with my experience. <laughs> okay? Let's continue. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. What kingdom is he talking about? Well, if you're an idolater, you're not giving all your attention to Christ. Is this specifically talking about the kingdom of heaven? Or is it talking about spiritual? Uh, spiritual. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience are not safe people who get messed up. No, you're a child of disobedience. And if you hear the gospel and you reject it, okay? It's like the, the, you know, the falling away. A lot of people out there want to make the argument that the falling away is saved brethren getting messed up. Because if that is what the falling away is, then hey, then hey, what about son like that jerk from England? He's, he's really saved. He's just messed up. Hmm? Or hey, then hey, if it's saved people who are messed up, what about some of these Mormons? What about Catholics, right? Right? Yeah, see, when you get into that argument that the falling away is saved people who are messed up, that opens the broad way to destruction. Well, the Charismatics, they're actually saved. They're just messed up. They're falling away. No! The falling away are those who went out from us that were never of us, brother. Okay? That's what the falling away is. In comparison, in comparison, a child of disobedience here is not talking about saved people. Prove it to you. Verse 7. Okay? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the world. Walk as children of light. You were once one of them. Like it says in Ephesians chapter uh, 2. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? You're a new creature. Okay? So a child of disobedience is someone who is not saved, who heard the gospel and rejects it. Because remember in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to what? Let's, let's look at that. 
uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Okay? You gotta, you gotta be careful with that. Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, uh, where is that? Uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 9 in Ephesians chapter 5. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Okay? And the wrath of God is the time of Jacob, Jacob's trouble. You and I are not appointed to wrath. Okay? When you want to say that the falling away is saved people messed up, okay then, so then what? Catholics are all, uh, then the Catholics are saved, but they're messed up. Hey, they got everything wrong, but they got who God is, right? One God and three persons? Huh? Oh, what about the Mormons? Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh well, they're, they're saved. They're just messed up. You, you open up the broad way for destruction when you try to make the argument that the falling away is saved, brethren, messed up. It is not. It is not. Just like it is not, children of disobedience are safe people who are messed up. No. Children of disobedience, children of wrath, are those who hear the truth and reject it. Okay? Christ, the love of Christ is at Calvary. You reject that, God's wrath is for you. God doesn't love everybody. You want the love of God, this is each. Go to the cross. Death to self. You have to die. Okay? For something to be born again, something has to die. Okay? Something has to die. Okay? So, child of wrath, okay, or child of disobedience, it's not safe people mess up, messed up. See, you make that argument for that, like I said, then, well, then I guess everybody's saved, right? They're just messed up. Watch it with that. Let's continue. Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather approve them. And brethren, who is your mother? Who is your father? Who is your mother? Who are your brethren? Who are your sisters? Who are who who are your brethren? Who is your mother? Who are they? That's quite simple. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Who is my brother? Okay, like I said, we've, we've addressed this before in another video. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the name, uh, that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. A pure heart is a broken heart. A pure heart is a contrite heart. A pure heart is a heart that feareth the Lord. That's what a pure heart is. But someone who boots the door and climbs up another way, that isn't a pure heart. There is a point, brethren, where some of you have to walk away. Some of you have to walk away. You have to walk away from your family. You might live under their roof but, and can't move out right now. That's fine. But other than that, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I believe in Jesus, but in works you deny him. The only thing you have changed is your outer appearance. 
you're still the same wicked lost sinner on the inside. There's no new creature. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? <laughs> I can converse via email with an atheist. More easier than I can converse with a Christian who is offended at the truth of the authorized version of the scriptures who says you're being too extreme and what concord hath Christ with Belial or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? And the temple of God, let's, okay, let's, so you know, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit, capital S, of God dwelleth within you, and the Lord is that Spirit? If any man, that includes you, Defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay. All right. And okay. And, and, and you want, and you, let's go to Acts chapter 7. Okay. Because Catholicism tells you that God dwells in a building. And Catholicism through the German Catholics like the Lutherans, the disgusting Methodists, the uh, Presbyterians, a lot of the Baptists, the Care Catholics. Okay, the phallus houses. Okay, the buildings. Uh, Acts chapter 7. Oh, verses 48 on to verse 50. And of course, he is quoting Isaiah 66. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Okay. That, that's enough. That, that's enough. Okay. All right. Verse 16 again. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God. They shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Three different dispensations. Three different dispensations. Under the law, Isaiah chapter 52, told to come out from among them and be ye separate. Right here in this dispensation, by grace through faith. Okay? By his grace through our faith. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate. During the time of Jacob's trouble, Revelation chapter 18. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate. In three different dispensations, we see this thing that crosses dispensational lines being separate, other than what? Than that. But if you're a Christian, okay, you, you wear the right clothing, right? But yet, you justify the things of the world. You live 
in the world, right? We're supposed to be in the world, not of the world. You live in the world but you, and also are of the world. You go to Satan for entertainment. You go to Satan for him to tell you what a Christian is. Like the Jimmy Swaggerts and all the whatever it is. You go to Satan. What fellowship? <laughs> what fellowship hath righteousness with righteousness with unrighteousness? How can you easily get along with someone who is lost and of the world? How can you get along with that? Brad, you just said, I have email conversation with people, with atheists. Okay, I don't get along with them. Okay, they ask questions, and we go from there. Okay, I'm not buddy buddy with anyone of the world. I'm not. Hence, who is your mother? Hence, you have a family that is Catholic. You have a wife who says. She is a Christian, but hates you. You have a brother who's like, "Hey, don't don't say anything. Just just you know, just go there, but don't you can't talk about this. You can't talk about that." You have a father who's like, "You're not a Christian because you haven't shown the evidence of speaking in tongues." And see, as a new creature in Christ Jesus, okay, a new creature in Christ Jesus, behold, all things are come, become new. What is the fruits of that? Romans chapter 8. Because we are new creatures in Christ, okay, Romans chapter 8. A lot of devils hate Romans chapter 8 because... Romans chapter 8 <coughs> spits on the flesh, which the devils puff up. Christianity is all fleshly. The Christian movies and Christian television, the, the hell evangelists, it's all fleshly. And the spirit that they are preaching is that spirit of Antichrist. And that comes from what? Your mother? Your father, your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband. Maybe time for you to walk away, brother, sister. Because if you value your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, more than the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul himself said, I count all things as dung that I may win Christ. Now, he was addressing the things of the law, but ultimately, Christ first. People will make the argument, well, Jesus wouldn't have me walk away from my family. If your family rejects the Jesus Christ given to you in the authorized version of the scripture, you choose the Lord and let your family go to hell. Oh! Brad. Romans chapter 8. What is the fruits of being a new creature in Christ Jesus? Romans chapter 8 verses 12 on to verse 14. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit, capital S, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the capital S Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We, I had a great conversation with my best friend uh, yesterday about this, about mortify. Morte, dead. Mortgage, death pledge. You have seen me even say that to mortify means to put down. 
you put down a dog or a cat, right? What are you doing? You're killing it. Morte. Death. Mortify. Death. And I agree with that. Henceforward. And, and you saw me even do that. Okay? Henceforward. Uh, until I'm proven through the scriptures, through a brother, that mortification, because, think about it. Yes. Mortify. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. See, putting down is a more is a euphemistic term of you put down I put down my cat Fritz, what, two years ago. I killed Fritz. I killed Fritz. But euphemistic language I put down. I I I am in a hundred percent agreement. Kill it. We are to kill the flesh. And not this crazy whipping yourself with the, the, the spikes like the Catholics do. No, 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 no. Go to call Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Kill, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, physical and spiritual. What do you think you're doing when you're being entertained by the devil? spiritual fornication. Uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, and the Lord abhorreth the covetous, okay? For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walk some in the which ye also walk sometime when ye lived in them. When ye lived in them, past tense. That was once us. But see, we are to kill the flesh. Kill it. Why? Romans 12. Romans 12. Verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. When you sacrifice something, what happens? Christ was sacrificed on the altar? Huh? Okay? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Will of God? Will of God? Yeah, you thought I forgot about that, didn't you? Yeah. The will of God uh, before the death, burial, and resurrection when he was offering the kingdom of heaven as opposed to the will of God for us today. Okay? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Therefore then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. To love not the world or the things of the world. We are in the world, not of the world. Okay? that ye should abstain from fornication. Physical, of course, but also spiritual. You don't go to the devil to be entertained. You don't go to the devil for comfort. God forbid you go to the devil to learn Christianity. 
that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you, forewarned you and testified. God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. And that's not sinless perfection either. Okay? There is no such thing as sinless perfection. Uh, if you got someone who comes around saying they don't sin anymore, spit on the ground and call them a liar and walk away. Because if they say they don't sin anymore, then they're calling themselves God. Because God never has, never will, nor can he sin. Okay? Get away from such a one as that. 1 Timothy chapter 2. The will of God to be sanctifi our sanctification. To not be conformed unto this world. To prove what is that good and perfect will of God. Who, 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 who are we proving that unto? Called to be ambassadors for Christ. The way you serve Jesus Christ our Lord God and Father. The way you serve him reflects him. The reverse of that is true also. You got one of these fakes. One of these Christians. The way they serve their father, the devil, reflects him. When they get mad at you, talking about abstaining from all appearance of evil. From wanting to have a sanctified life. I'm not going to turn my back on my family. Well, don't. I want nothing to do with it. I'll never abandon my family. Your family is against the word of God. They've been warned. They're children of disobedience. Time to walk away. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 4. I exhort therefore... That first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We are to pray for our governments that we may do that, to live a peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. But what happens when your government is controlled by Satan, the Jesuits? Like, I don't pray for our government. I pray, Lord, keep the devil away from us that we may do your will. But your will be done. Okay? I don't pray for this Jesuit government of America. No way. Because the, the, the government is in the hand of the Jesuit order. America is a Jesuit nation. Okay? I don't pray for America. I pray that our Lord have mercy on America that... We who are of the church of the living God on that sinking Titanic may be used of him to preach the gospel. Because who did he save today who wasn't saved yesterday? Okay? And I am a firm believer that in the mass scope of this world, I hope that one soul a day in the mass spectrum of this entire world that there is one soul out of the billions that are on this planet earth I hope and pray that there is one soul a day that the Lord saves and I believe that if you don't want to believe that that's fine but when no one is being saved by our Lord at all mm, mm. and there's nowhere in scripture about when the last soul saved there's nothing like that no but when it gets to the point where people will have nothing at all, there are still people out there who will hear. There are. Few and far between, but there still are people out there that will hear today. Let's continue. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Yes, God would have all men to be saved. 
But see, he has a requirement. You have to die to your self-righteousness. You have to take responsibility. You can't say like, well, yeah, the woman you gave us to be with me, she gave me. No, you got to take responsibility and you got to fear him. Those are what, that's what he requires. So many put the door out of the way. But yes, God would have all men to be saved, but not everybody is going to go the way he has prescribed for us today in this dispensation. Okay? And 2 Peter chapter 3. Verses 8 and 9. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verses 8 and 9. We're almost done. We're almost done. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verses 8 and 9. But beloved. Be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. All this means. Is that our Lord lives outside of time. Our Lord is eternal. What is a thousand years to an eternal being? Okay? We are in the construct of time. Thermodynamics. The second law, I believe it is, of thermodynamics. Things decay in time. Unlike the retarded, slow, stupid um, evolutionists that say things are getting better with age. No. See, God, verse 8, is talking about our God who lives out of time, eternal. What is it? What is a thousand years to an eternal being? Nothing. Okay? That's all that means. Be careful with people who want to mess that verse up. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to belief. Repentance. God would have all men to be saved. But not all men are going to come on his terms. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. 28 on 31. Mark chapter 8, verses 28 on to verse 31. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And Jesus answered. Now again, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, but we're looking at this for our instruction in righteousness. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land for my sake, and the Gospels. And you read Matthew chapter 24, Let those flee uh, to the mountains, uh, let those in Judea flee to the mountains when that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the third rebuilt temple, declaring himself to be I am, having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay? All right? During the time of Jacob's trouble, like the Exodus, they're going to have to leave everything behind and get out of there. Rapido! Hence, is it time for you to walk away? But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and the last first. Knowing that the same tribulation is going on with our brethren across the uh, across the world, I'm not alone in my sufferings. Neither are you, brother or sister. We're not alone. We're not alone. We're all going through something, aren't we? We all have problems with our so-called blood relation family. But who is, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? 
my brethren of the church of the living God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4. Verses 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Our labor is not in vain in the Lord, brethren. I know a lot of you out there, my brothers and sisters, are dealing with so-called family members who are Christians and you want to have a sanctified life and they're giving you nothing but a hassle and uh, it's I, I, I get that that's that's a common trait for us of the church of the living God there comes a point where you're going to have to walk away they have made their choice God first. Our Lord Jesus Christ first in all things. That is going to be it for this video. May have another video to do today which will be on the backup channel. Um, we'll see. Thank you for all of you who prayed for us. Our inspection obviously went great. Um, thank you. Continue to pray for one another. I love you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for helping us be there for one another. And thank you. Hopefully this, uh, hopefully this will help one of you. The Lord be glorified. The, the Lord be glorified. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.